Well, today we're gonna finally get some numbers for the fuel flow on a couple different low pressure fuel pump setups for the 3.5 liter transverse platform. Test a couple different items. We're gonna start out testing the stock bucket. Then we're gonna test out the DW300C. Then we're gonna test the Hellcat. And finally, we're gonna test the dual pump setup. We'll see how much this actually puts out. And what I'm gonna end up doing is making notes at different voltages from 13 all the way to 18 at different pressures, all the way from 50 to 110 PSI. And how are we gonna do that? First thing I wanna talk about is my test setup. We're trying to simulate as close as possible the conditions under the vehicle under controlled uh, circumstances. What I have here are a few different devices that are gonna measure a couple different things. This right here is a regulated DC power supply. What this is going to do is gonna allow me to set voltages and keep it there and measure how much amperage I'm drawing at any particular data collection point. This right here is essentially the test rig right here. And this is the beginning point of the test. This is a, a tub that holds 15 gallons of E85 that I'm gonna be using for this test. This is where it starts, pump goes there. It will then push the fuel up into the test rig. This is what connects to the top of the fuel pump. Goes down here flows to here into the entry point where we've got pressure gauge. Now this pressure gauge reached from zero to 160 PSI. I'm testing from 50 to 100 PSI, uh, 10 PSI increments. This platform in the vehicle can see up to 110 PSI in some readings. I think the happy place for this vehicle is, is around 80. What we see here uh, when collecting data through either live wire or HP tuners, whatever device you use. This is gonna test pressure. Now how are we gonna create pressure? By essentially creating a blockage. This is a different way to create pressure in this system than the vehicle is going to be creating, but it's the easiest way to simulate it to give us as close as possible circumstances. It's just a gate valve. I'm just going to open and close as needed to build pressure on the pressure gauge. That's how we're going to build pressure and change pressure points. And then what we'll see is the amperage draw change plus or minus depending on how much pressure this thing's trying to maintain. The next thing we're going to test is fuel flow. There's a lot of equipment out there to test flow of, of various types of fluids. I found something that was cost effective. It's about 140 bucks. It will not give me a number showing flow per time. Liters per minute, gallons per minute, gallons per hour, liters per hour, what have you. The way I'm going to measure actual flow within time is I'll be filming this. I'll be taking a 30 seconds time slice, utilizing video editing software and actually counting and doing math to get what the flow rate is. Um, next thing you know, as you see here, I got this little ground clip going to one of the connectors. I have four different fuel pumps we're testing, two different types of connectors. Three of them will be the standard Ford connector and one of them will be a GM style connector. So I had to create two different wire harnesses. This is the one for the Ford connector. This is the one for the GM connector. Now what I've got here is a ground source grounding out the test equipment. As fluid flows through a pipe, it can create a static charge. And that's obviously not ideal when you're messing with fuel. So to mitigate that, I've got the body of the test equipment grounded to everything else. Everything's grounded together, to dissipate any uh, difference of potential here. Everything's still fused. I've got 130 amp fuse for the single pump. The dual pump is Got 230 amp fuses. Source of power is gonna go into the back of the regulated power supply. When fuel is done measuring past the pressure regulating device, it's gonna to return to the fuel tank via this tube I've got installed here. It's the way we're going to hold down the, the pumps. I've created this hold down tabs and this, this will just hand tight. We'll just hold it down, keep it from springing up inside the tank. You see a little standoff device that will keeps the, the spring pressure of the fuel module as it sits in the tank, keeps a little bit of pressure so that it's not free floating and dangling as the pump starts pumping it may create. It's not ideal. You want this thing pressed against something as it sits in the fuel tank. It's sitting with a little bit of pressure on there so there's no wiggle room. We won't be testing the EVAP ports because we're not testing any of that. It's just open here and here. By extension, we'll be testing the jet pump. And there you have it.
I think it should be noted the limitations of the test setup that I'm using in today's test. Understanding that a larger sample size would be more accurate on the results. Unfortunately, I'm working within a budget as well as constraints on what's available to me for test equipment. But obviously this would be a much more accurate test with a larger sample size done in a controlled research lab fuel testing type facility. But in the absence of any other tests being performed, as far as I know, nothing like this is out there for this platform. This is kind of the best that we've got. The other thing worth mentioning is the actual particular tests that I'm conducting. Current draw and fuel flow are great, but one thing that I am not able to test that would provide additional answers is the heat generated by each pump through the testing process. Don't have the test equipment to get that sort of data, but that is one valuable piece of information that I am unable to collect. One thing that I wanted to briefly touch on before we get into this was converting this standard 3.8 quick connect to an AN fitting. I wanted to make it easier for the test set to connect this to that. But where this could come in handy is down the road if anybody wanted to do an aftermarket fuel system, you can switch from this to that relatively simply. The only difference is though, when you buy this adapter, I needed to machine the bottom of this a little bit more. They don't give you enough length here to get the fitting on it. In order to get this to fit underneath that locking ring, I had to machine the bottom about eighth of an inch and you can find these online everywhere they're three eighths quick connect to 6an adapter fittings they make two style they make this kind and they make the clip this kind is the one you want to get because you can machine it the other one is it has some a plastic clip device that doesn't would work on a normal conditions but it doesn't work in this case doesn't necessarily need to be on there really stiff because the threads are holding it on by that raised up ridge so we're good there the first one we're going to test today is going to be the completely bone stock low pressure fuel pump brand new straight from ford zero miles zero fluids gone through it so we're going to go ahead and Hold this up. Seco seal, way more positive pressure seal. The next one we're going to test is the DW300C drop-in fuel pump. This is a converted stock fuel module and you can't really tell outright that it has that pump installed. One way is to look at the wire. This is the wire that comes with the DW. This is OEM. It's a little different. Slightly different shades of colors. You can also tell by the connector. That's the DW connector. Stock one will be white. 
DW300 will be black. The next one we're going to test is the Walbro 525, aka the Hellcat pump. Been installed into this module. Please look at my other video that will be linked in the description for how to make this conversion. Uh, I've seen a couple different ways to install this. The way I install it, the way you can tell is this black ring right here. This is being used as a spacer. If you look at the wires, they're usually pretty short because that's all they give us since the wires are hard connected to the fuel pump. It's not like the Dietz Works or the OEM pump where it's a connector. Really, that's the only way you can tell. I'm just trying to think if you can kind of look down there. It's not really... You're unable to see it easily. You're going to have to disassemble it to really double verify. But that's an easy way, an easy tell, at least on the installation that I have. This is black ring that you see right there. It's a spacer that I use. The the pump sits just a like an eighth of an inch, that much thickness taller than the other pump. But let's get this test started. not move any finally we're going to do the dual pump setup this is the power for both pumps we're not going to connect this this is the power for the connector for the float and again another seco seal to ensure a positive seal Volts DC does not produce enough pressure to push past 95 psi.
So now that we've got the testing completed, it's time to talk about the results. To that end, I've got some charts. We've got the OEM pump, the Dietzworks DW300C, the Walbro 525, and the Custom Dual Pump. And by the way, all these charts and graphs will be available for download. Look for the link in the description below. So if you go down the chart, you'll see a section highlighted in red. This is the maximum voltage that OEM driver module will output. This is the max amount of flow that it'll see. I want you to take note of these values. These values are not indicative of what you will see flowing in the vehicle. These values are strictly the values that I were seeing flowing through my test set. Flow through the vehicle could be different. However, all the pumps were tested with the same variables. So really what we're looking for is the increase from the OEM pump. And I'll show you an example. The OEM pump is the baseline. And here you have an example of what I'm talking about. You have two additional columns to the right, the average percent increase. And the far right column, you'll see the overall percentage increase. Now comparing some of these pumps right off the bat, you're going to see the Dietzworks DW300C. I would venture to say that the DW300C is flowing the same amount as the OEM pump. Now this surprised me quite a bit actually. I did this test a number of times and each time it never flowed much more than the OEM pump. This result surprised me so much that I made a separate video talking about this and the link to that video is also in the description below. But how do these compare to each other? That's where the next few charts come into play. Going to the 12 volt DC chart, you know, this is kind of on the low end. Typically, you'll see this platform operate between 13 and 14.8 volts. But you'll see here how the Dietzworks and the OEM pump flow pretty much identical. When we move up to 13.5 volts, we see the same thing with the OEM and DW300C. Here, you see right around 90 psi, the dual and the Walbro pump kind of overlap. 14.8 volts, we see the OEM and Dietzworks is identical. The Walbro pump, and a nice increase over both of them. And you also see the dual pump starting to, to take the lead. Moving up to 18 volts, we still see that none of the pumps reached 100 PSI except the dual pump. Here you see the OEM and the Dietzworks pump very close to each other. But what does this all mean for the current draw? If you notice down here at the bottom, I have a graph of the current draw of each pump. Now here's where I was discussing in the other video what does separate the Dietzworks from the OEM pump. It may flow the same, but if you notice, it runs slightly cooler and it's more consistent. Here again at 13.5 volts, the Walbro pump is almost twice the amount of current draw as the dual pump. Here we have the OEM pump starting to draw a lot more current than the DW300. And again, consistently the Walbro pump is the highest current draw. And at 18 volts, same thing. So what does that mean? My test rig was utilizing 10 gauge wire. And as I was conducting the test, especially with the Walbro pump, that wire was getting pretty warm. Now, from the driver module to the top of the fuel module hat, your power and return wires are 14 gauge. So here is a chart I found on the internet. This is the one I found that was kind of conservative in the middle. Top of the chart you have the distance in feet and on the left of the chart you have the amperage draw. Now depending on which platform you're driving will depend on where the driver module is, but the driver module to the top of the hat, I would say is about a good six foot run of wire. So based on this chart, you have between 15 and 20 amps that you'd want to push through that 14 gauge wire. And as we saw at 14.8 volts, the Hellcat pump is pushing way more than that. So after all the testing, and after all the charts, and after all the graphs, what do we choose? Well, here's some of the pros and cons that I've developed on each setup. You'll see that they each have some high and low points. I will say that the Walbro pump, though it flows quite a bit, it's pretty sketchy. Once you get up there, this thing gets I mean, you're drawing so much current, I'm concerned about the wire or the driver module itself being able to handle that amount of current. You'll burn those things up and they'll fail. Not to mention, this is kind of a big one. I discovered that the jet pump was not able to keep up. This fuel pump will suck down the fuel level on the saddle tank that is behind the passenger seat quicker than it can suck the fuel from the driver's side saddle tank. So it's you gotta be, you're gonna have to be careful here. I actually am leaning against using it, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to check out my other videos, and you guys have a great day.